So hi everybody, uh, thank you so much for uh, coming to my lecture. Uh, my name is uh, Jonathan Chat, and uh, the title for this talk is uh, Type Trickery or uh, How to Do Impossible Things. Uh, it's actually, I've seen that uh, I'm actually also giving another lecture right now at the other room, so uh, this is how you do impossible things. Um, so yeah, right. So uh, what's this all about? Um, so we all love static typing, and uh, it gives us uh, the ability to, to detect errors early. Um, it's great. We, we all love it. Uh, otherwise, we wouldn't have been here in a Scala conference. And, um, but sometimes some things can be hard to do in a static language. and. Uh, this talk is about actually how to alleviate some of the limitations that we have uh, in, in a static language like Scala. So you can think about it as how do we create APIs that look dynamic, that gives us this conciseness, and, but, uh, but are actually static. And what I'm not going to, to be talking about is uh, the dynamic trait, OK? Because the dynamic trait is dynamic. So, uh, not, not in the scope. And um, the idea for this talk is really uh, just to give you practical tools, uh, learn some practical techniques. Uh, it's not about theory. Um, we'll be, most of the time, we'll just be looking at code. Uh, I have just like a slide about uh, some theory that we'll need, but that's it, okay? I have to warn you, this is the extra spicy uh, track. So if you're not familiar with uh, implicit parameters, implicit conversions, type classes, uh, your satisfaction is not guaranteed. <laughs> OK. So uh, we'll start with a demo. Um, we'll be using a, a library that I wrote uh, when I worked at uh, Supersonic. It's actually like. Supersonic became part of Iron Source. It's one of the uh, one of the sponsors for for the conference. And um, so um, I've written this library. Uh, the aim is not to make you use the library. You can. It's open source. Uh, I've cloned it into my own personal GitHub. Um, but uh, the idea is just to use the code of the library to uh, for to learn. Okay, to to see some techniques and. Uh, Actually, I'll start not by the, not not with the Scala code, but actually I'm going to start with Python, okay? Because I want you to see something that can can be done in in a dynamic language, and that is a little hard to do in a statically typed language, okay? So, okay, sorry, right? Yeah, I'll be copying and pasting all of my code. So, right, so. Uh, this is not about syntax, okay? I'm not, not interested in that. You don't ha need to know Python. This is really, really simple. So basically what I'm doing here is I'm creating uh, a mapping, uh, or in, in Python it's called a dictionary, but it doesn't matter. So, uh, and I map from the string foo to an integer of one, and uh, in, an integer of three to the string hello, okay? And the next thing, the next thing that I can do is just, you know, get uh, what's it the key of uh, the key of three uh, and I get back hello and of course I can do also like uh, get foo from M and get this one and the next thing that I can do is I can take this M of three and and take the length okay and uh, it gives me back five and that's correct because there are five letters in hello I can also try to get four, okay? And what I get is uh, an exception. It's called the key error in Python. Uh, basically says four is not in the map. And I can also try to get 3.3. And it's going to be exactly the same, okay? I'm also going to get a key error. So that's all the Python we're going to do today. 
And uh, what I want to do now is just do the same things in Scala, okay? So, right. So I have a Scala, can everybody see this? Okay, a Scala repo. Um, and, okay, so I just start by creating a map, okay? Uh, one, one important thing for this talk is uh, if you have a question during during my presentation, or or you think you know you notice something uh, wrong or whatever, so uh, hold on to that thought, and uh, for maybe three to five minutes. And if you're still not, uh, if you still think that uh, uh, you don't understand something, then please raise your hand, and I'll allow you to to ask your question. And there will also be time for questions in the end. So I just create this this map, and it works great. Okay, I have a map from foo to one, and from three to hello. And I'll do the same things that I just did in Python. Okay, for foo I get sum of one. For three, I'll get sum of hello. For four, I will get none, because four is not in the map. It's nicer, right? We don't get the exception. For 3.3, we also get none, okay? And now I'm going to, now I do want to do that length thing, okay? So, so I'm doing this and I get an error, okay? Why did this happen? So um, the reason is we go back, okay, I'm scrolling back up uh, when I define this M and I can see that what happened is that actually my map is a map from any to any. And wh why did this happen? It's not too hard to understand. I had this string key and uh, an int key and the common, like the most specific ancestor for those two in Scala is any. So, so and the same, same logic holds for the values. So I get a map from any to any. And really, any is almost useless because there is very, very little you can do with a value of any. So this, and so I got this compile time error. Um, so of course I can do this. I can just cast, okay? I can use the famous or infamous as instance of, okay? And it works. I get this option of int sum, which is a sum of five, and uh, great. Right? This is excellent. Um, so the thing is, it's more verbose than what I did in Python, right? I had to do this ugly, ugly thing here. But um, also, it's really easy to, to get it wrong, right? So if I do the same thing with another key, with this key of, uh, with this key of foo, so I get this nasty runtime exception, and it's a class cast exception, right? Because uh, for this key, I got back an integer, and I can't can't cast it into a string, which I told it told uh, which I've written. Um, so that's not the best, right? So now I'm, I'm just going to put some you know magical code in. Uh, this is so now I'm starting to use this uh, marbles library, and uh, I'm going to so I'm going to paste it. And I'm going to hide it from you so that you don't see what I did. Uh, you actually, you can see what I did, but <laughs> don't look at the right. But uh, I'll get back to it like in a second, OK? And now what I can do is I can create this new thing, right? And I call it HM. It's an H map. What is, what's the H? H is for heterogeneous, OK? So uh, basically a map that can mix in several types inside. So. Um, and that's okay. Now I do the same boring stuff that I just did. So three, I get the hello. And notice that I, this, this time it's properly typed. So it's an option of string, right? And, uh, and I get this, oops, this foo. And I get an option of int. And I do the four, and I'll get a properly typed none, okay, an option of string. And, um, I can, this time it's okay, I can do the, this 
getting the length right because I had the, the proper typing, so no need for a cast here. And and now I'll try to do this, and that's nice. I get a, a, a compile time error, right? So I didn't intend for for there to be any doubles. I did. I wasn't explicit about it, but okay. I wanted a uh, a map that uh, allows me to just map strings to ints and ints to strings, and uh, so it's not allowed, and I catch this error at compile time, okay? So the, the next thing that uh, we're going to do is just look at how to implement something like this, and uh, before we do that, this is when I go to the theory, okay, part, and just a little theory, a little type theory, and it's about the concept of kinds, okay? Uh, I don't know how many of you are familiar with the concept of kinds. Okay, so most of you aren't. Uh, that's good. I'm teaching something new. So um, basically, kinds are like types of types. Okay, you can think about it this way. And uh, you may ask, like, what what kind of types are there? Uh, so the simplest types are the types we we all know. Things like int, string, and uh, the thing that is uh, interesting about those types is that those types have con can have concrete values, okay? So, for example, an int can have the value of, of zero, and a string can have the value of hello. So, uh, so those types are called, the, the kind for those types is called a type, okay? Or uh, it's also written as star. Uh, I'll call it star, okay? Um, and for example, list of int is also of kind star, and why is that? Because, uh, for example, the value of list one to three is is a concrete value that this type can assume. So this is this is a, a simple type, a concrete type, or a type of kind star. Okay? You may ask, are there any other kinds of types? So yes. Uh, for example, we can ask ourselves, what is a list? Not a list of int, just the list. Okay, so you can think about it as as if the list is a function. Okay, between types. So it takes a type, it takes the type of integer, and it returns a new type, uh, which is the fully applied type, the list of int type. Okay, uh, so and then um, we call that kind star arrow star. Okay, it takes one type and it returns a fully applied type. Okay, and um, option would be similar, right? So option uh, option also takes a type and returns a fully applied type. Let's go further. Okay, so the next type that I'm going to talk about is map. Okay, so map has it that has two type parameters. Okay, one for the key, one for the value. So uh, the way to think about it uh, is that. It, the application of the types is, is curried, okay? So I apply uh, the type of keys, and I get back something that I can apply the type of values for, and then I get the fully applied type, okay? Uh, for example, map from int to string. And uh, usually it's written without those uh, parentheses because uh, uh, the convention is that the arrow is right associative. Um, so you, you can just write it as if it's like star, arrow, star, arrow, star. And uh, of course you can do that as many times as you like, so more stars and more arrows. And uh, just to complete the picture, this is not really relevant for, for what I'm going to show next, but to complete the picture, there are also other kinds. So for example, the kinds for things like functor. You don't need to know what a functor is for, for this talk, it's not really interesting. But, for example, in Scala, uh, the instance for, uh, for a specific, uh, uh, for example, for functor of list, something that tells us that functor, uh, that list is a functor, uh, it's a specific value. So, for example, if you use the cats library, it would be cat dot, I don't know, something dot list instance, okay? And uh, this is a concrete value, so the functor of list is going to be of kind star, right? And functor by itself is going to be something that takes a star, arrow, star uh, kind of type and returns a concrete type. So this is, you know, parentheses of 
star arrow star, you know, arrow star. Uh, and this is different from, from this one, okay? It, it does matter where, where, where you put the parentheses. You can't just apply two regular types uh, you or two star types. Uh, here, you need to, to give one uh, star arrow star type here. Right, so that's the theory part. So now we go back here and we'll start looking at what this HMAP thing is, okay? So the first thing I want you to notice is this uh, declaration of HMAP. So it looks different than the declaration for map. So if you look at the declaration for map, you'll see something like map uh, with two type parameters, like the K and V, okay? And here we see that we parameterize by something different, like by one parameter, something a little like weird, okay? So actually what this, what this denotes, this M underscore underscore, it means that we, this, is, this is the Scala way to write a higher kinded type, okay? So this is, this is a type which has a kind of star, arrow, star, arrow, star, okay? It takes one type parameter, second type parameter, and it returns the fully like the fully applied type parameter, okay? So that's, that, that's just syntax that you may not be familiar with. Um, so if I go back to my demo, right, doesn't like, so go back to the demo. Uh, now, now, I, now I'll show this M that I was trying to hide before. Um, so when I declared the HMAP, I declared it with this M that I supplied, and this M, it's just a trait, that I created, and the function of this trait is to say what are the, uh, the legal uh, mappings between, or the legal pairs uh, of, of types uh, for this HMAP, okay? So I create this trait, and I create those two implicit case classes, okay? So I have this SI instance, uh, which is, uh, extends M of string int, and an is instance, which extends m of in string, okay? And if we go back now to, to the HMAP code, then let's go to that get operation. Here it is. Here's the declaration for it. So you can see that the k and v now have migrated from, you know, from the definition of the class into the definition of the operation. Um, so while the class only has this notion of what's legal, what are the legal uh, relationships between K and V, uh, I can use get many times and, and use it with the different K and V each time, each time, right? So, um, so get has K and V type parameters. It will take K, uh, a key, which is of type K, and it will return an option of V, and, but, it also gets this implicit parameter uh, EV for evidence uh, of type uh, whose type is M of K and V, okay? So basically what I'm doing is I'm, I'm requiring, uh, when, I, when I use this get, I'm requiring evidence that K and V are valid together, okay? So that's, that's a nice technique. And uh, let's see how, like, just the beginning of how I implemented that. So uh, this particular implementation, there, there are many ways to implement that. Uh, you do need to use as instance of somewhere, but uh, the nice thing is that it hides. I just use it like one or two times in the in here, and um, and I don't. Uh, so it exposes a clean API, but uh, internally it does need to cast. Uh, and I have this unsafe map, okay? And I'm just showing it just for, again, for the type, just to look at the type. We're not really going to look at the implementation. It's, it's boring. Um, but uh, the type here is a map from the evidence, okay, to a map. So, um, and so here, again, we see this M underscore underscore. But the really want the reason I'm showing this is to to tell you that this is really different from from this one. Okay, so at the declaration side, it means 
you know, a, a, a type of kind star, arrow star, arrow star. But here it means it's completely different. It's a, it's a concrete type and it's called an existential type. Okay, so um, so basically it says any m, any m with, or an, a value that of m applied with any uh, any two types. Okay, maybe. Or, or this map, okay? So basically any map with any K and any V is going to be, uh, uh, is going to be compatible with this type, M of underscore, underscore, okay? And um, so why did I do this? It allows me to do something nice like slice by type, okay? Uh, it allows me to do this uh, get map operation where I just specify K and V and I get back only the slice of the H map that corresponds to, to that to that specific uh, to, to the mapping between K and V, um, right? So now we've seen how to implement this get, or uh, I'll show you another operation. It's pretty similar, like the plus. Okay, it takes a pair again K and V, takes the evidence and returns a new H map updated with with the same M, updated with uh, um, with a new pair, okay? So pretty straightforward. One thing that I didn't talk about yet is the constructor. So when I created this H map, I did something like this, like this foo to one, three to hello. And really my question is what, what are the K and V for, for this operation, right? So. For example, for the uh, for for the key, okay, is it an int? Is it a string? Is it an any? So surely it's not an any, right? Because otherwise it's like that's what we're trying to avoid. So um, really, the answer to that is that there is no K and V, okay. So I'm introducing this new thing here. So here's the apply, and I have, again, the apply is parameterized by the M, that's going to be used, the, we have this HMAP parameterized by M, that's the result. I have this like H pair thing here, like well, what's an H pair, right? So let's go and see what H pair is. So basically H pair is a pair, but it can be a pair, again, not just with a specific K and V, but of any K and V that are compatible under this M, okay? So again, it's parameterized by this M. And, uh, and now uh, I, we see something new. We have this K and uh, this K and V, which are inside of the class, right? So they are not on, they are not type parameters, they are type members. So, what that means, like in this context, is that they're actually uh, abstract, okay? Or, or again, this is a form of existential quantification, okay? It means that if we have an H pair, there is no way for us to know what K or V are, actually, okay? But what we do know is that there is a K and there is a V associated with this particular instance of the, of the H pair. And what the H pair does is it's pretty, it's very simple, right? It's just, it just it uh, just has a reference to the to the pair of K and V, the KV here, and it also has a reference. We save the the reference to the evidence, okay? So uh, and the evidence is of type M of K and V. So if we have this H pair, we don't know what K is, we don't know what V is, but we know that there is a K, there is a V, and they are legal. Under, under M, and we also have the evidence for that, okay? So going back, really going back to, to the de no, sorry, to the HMAP source code, so um, we, have, we have those pairs here, and what I'm doing with, it, with them is really simple, right? I'm just taking an empty HMAP, and I fold left into it. I, um, and notice that I'm just adding the, the, the KV pairs by, one by one, 
And notice that I actually need this pairs.evidence, right? Because to do this plus, to add the k and v inside, I need the evidence for, uh, for k and v. So I import the pair.evidence, and then I, then I just add pair.kv. And one other nice thing that, that we have here um, is, well, let's go back to the demo for a second. So no, no h pair, and didn't write h pair anywhere, right? So how did this happen? So basically, we look at how we create those h pairs. H pair by itself is a sealed abstract class, so there is no way to instantiate it as you know as a new, with a new. Um, so the only way to create an h pair is with this method called from pair. And from pair, uh, it's a little more complicated. It has a, little, a signature that's a little more complicated. Nothing too crazy. Like, it gets the M, it gets a KK, a VV. Uh, it takes a pair of KK, VV. It takes the evidence, and it's just K is KK, V is VV. Uh, it saves the pair, it saves the evidence. That's it, OK? So basically, from pair just allows us to forget what K is and what V is, OK? It just allows us to take any k and v, which are legal, and you know, forget what k and v is and just say, OK, it's legal under m. So going back to the, uh, and one, one other nice thing is that it's not just a def definition, it's an implicit definition. So anywhere where I expect to have this, this h pair, I can actually just supply a pair. Okay, and this really so that technique is called a magnet. Okay, I I have this type which is not really I don't expect my users to to supply that specific type. I just uh, I I expect them to supply things that are convenient for them, and it will get implicitly uh, uh, converted. So and the nice thing here, well, you, you could say maybe I can do something like this with you know, with the uh, overloading or maybe some, I don't know, but uh, it doesn't really work uh, when you have this var args. So, so for this particular case, it's really, really nice and it allows us this very, very clean syntax. Okay, it looks exactly like our Python uh, example. And, and that's it. So, uh, so nice, nice dynamic API. Um, I'm actually going a lot faster than I thought I would. Um, okay, so I'll also show some some usages for for this. Yes. Yeah. Can you have two keys on the same same type? Um. Yeah. You can, but you might need to annotate. Uh, so uh, yeah, I, I'll repeat the question. Sorry, uh, the question was whether I can actually have a key, uh, for example, uh, a mapping from a key to two different values. So you have to you have to remember that all implicits are resolved at, at compile time, right? So it is possible you 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 can create an M like that, but you might need to then annotate and uh, uh, for maybe if you do a get. Because uh, for plus it will work, but for get it might not work uh, without any type annotation because uh, you'll get uh, two implicits uh, which match the same because you only have the key as a, as a parameter for get. You'll have to supply the right. Uh, but also you, you can actually have, so because of this specific implementation that actually saves the evidence, so you can have one to to 10 and also one to hello in, in the same app, okay? So some, some usage examples. Um, so actually, if you go, so again, you can look at the source code uh, at my page. And, um, and the one of the first, if you look at the test, usually there's a usage examples. Uh, so one example that you, one thing that you can do with this kind of HMAP thing is uh, an extensible record, right? You can actually have, uh, instead of, I don't know, a case class with many, with a lot of, uh, 
maybe if you have, I don't know, 100 uh, different fields. So instead of doing this uh, huge case class uh, that grows all the time, you can just uh, uh, use, uh, define your keys as, you know, just as objects, and then have uh, the mapping from the from the key uh, into the type that you want, you know, to store there. So, for example, if I have a person, I can have, you know, a name, and uh, then I'll have, you know, it maps from the name to from name to type into string, right? Or from the age to int, or from height to double. Okay, I'm, I'm glossing over some fine points here. It's really not not that interesting, that much interesting. So. Um, Right, so I have this person, I, I can, you know, it's Jimmy, uh, his, its name is four, its uh, age is four, uh, and uh, I can update the age, for example, right? So one other thing that I can do is I can create this, uh, and this is actually closer to the intended use case that originally I developed this for. Um, you can actually have a map where, uh, you have a more complex relationship between the uh, the key type and the value type. So up until now, we just had like constant types, string, int, int, string. Um, and here, for example, let's say that int and strings are both, both uh, special, okay? Uh, I declare them special. And um, now I say I want to have a mapping between, you know, any special key and a sequence of that key. So now I can have something like, you know, a map from, from one to a sequence of one, two, uh, from two to sequence of three, four, and from foo to sequence of bar and buzz. And then uh, if I try to mix them, you know, again, it won't work. So, uh, so if I try to do one to sequence of foo, it doesn't compile. And, um, and now I can, for example, slice by the, the types, like from, from int to a sequence of int, and uh, take the values, flatten, uh, sum, and it'll get 10, which is the sum of one, 1 through 4, right? And the last thing that I'm going to show is this um, uh, use case. I don't know if it's a good idea, uh, but <laughs> just some, 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 something fun. Uh, a, a function that can behave differently for different, uh, for different types. So uh, this is a little, so here I actually use this one key, uh, and uh, I have a map from that key into an int function and a string function. So the int function uh, multiplies by, by three. The string uh, function just returns, you know, s plus s. So now if I apply, if I do a special function of five, I'll get 15. And if I do a special function of foo, I'll get uh, foo foo. Uh, one annoying issue that uh, I was not able to resolve, um, and I really, really tried. <laughs> so um, uh, is, of course, when we start dealing with subtyping. Um, and um, here's an example. So I have this animal. And I have two types of animal, a cow and a horse. And um, basically, I want a map that can map from any animal to any other animal. And, um, and here, so if I try to do this H map from a cow to a horse, it doesn't work. Uh, the reason is that the compiler infers cow to type and horse to type, and it doesn't find uh, the correct uh, instance. And yeah, that messes everything up, so <laughs> that's horrible. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so so I tried a lot of variant streaks and a lot of stuff. Uh, the compiler doesn't backtrack. So I actually opened a Scala issue for this. Uh, um, nobody cares, so OK. <laughs> it's OK. <laughs> What's that? Nobody expects type inference to be perfect. If you give it your, tell it the type by just giving the type in, uh, in square brackets and it works, then fine. And if it infers wrong in some strange cases, 
then you can open all the issues you want. They know type inference doesn't yeah, but work in strange cases. Yeah, sure. Um, I mean, it makes sense for the compiler to backtrack because, uh, um, you know, if, if you have uh, some, some property of a type, okay, you, you also expect it to, uh, to, be, uh, to work for the subtypes. So that's the meaning of a subtype. So, uh, so it should work, like in theory. Okay, it doesn't work in practice. Uh, right. <laughs> um, yeah, actually, I, I went really fast. So, uh, yeah, uh, let me summarize, and then then we'll uh, we'll just uh, we'll allow some more time for questions. Um, so, what what have we talked about? Uh, we've talked about kinds, uh, how to define. How to use them in the definition side? How to use them in in the usage? Uh, I've actually didn't show that, so it's one. Okay, nice. Uh, let me show that to you. Um, the demo. Sorry. Right. So one thing that I want you to notice is that when I use when I use the H map, so the M here, unlike at the definition side where I declared it with the underscores, here I actually leave it unapplied. Okay. So. Uh, that's sometimes it's a little you know confusing for for some people, um, but it makes perfect sense, right? Because HMAP actually requires a, a star arrow star arrow star kind of type. So um, so if I apply it, uh, it actually becomes just a star kind of type, and it's the wrong kind, right? You cannot mix kinds. Um, so that's just uh, just a little something that. Uh, Sometimes confusing and it's worth knowing. So now you know how to <laughs> also uh, use the, those types at the usage site. And um, we've talked a little bit about existential quantification, uh, both with type parameters and uh, type members. And we've talked about how we can use implicit search and uh, specifically how. Um, so how to use implicit search to to allow the compiler to to really define what's legal and not legal, um, and we've shown how um, how we can change behavior by moving types from you know from the class uh, definition to method definitions. Um, we've talked a little bit about how saving the evidence can allow some interesting things like this slicing. Uh, and the last thing is we've also talked about magnets, uh, specifically here we showed it with the vargs and how it allows us to do nicer APIs. And uh, I think that's about it. So um, I'm open to any questions now. Right, anybody there? So, right now you explicitly define the evidences for every combination of types, right? For key, key type, value type, right? Is that what we saw in the code? Implicit object. Yeah. What do you mean explicitly? Like you, have, you as a user of this library, you have to write these things, right? You all, here is the usage of the library. So you just you declare what M you want. Right, and you define as a user. You also define object one, right? The object. Yeah, you have to. You ha right. as a user, you have to define the uh, this trait that that uh, that tells your specific H map which which combinations are valid. Right. Have you experimented in any way with l being this automatically provided somehow with like? So I don't think it can be. So yeah, the question was uh, whether uh, this M can be automatically uh, inferred. So. Um, being uh, so, the answer for me is that uh, static typing in this context means that um, you actually do want to declare that. So mm -hmm. I wanted this behavior. I wanted this. I wanted this to fail, right? When I try to get 3.3, I wanted it to fail. So I, I do want to declare. I want to keep type safety. Uh, I just wa don't want it to, you know, add a lot of. Uh, 
uh, I don't want to do explicit casts, and I don't want to. Be, I want this to be as syntactically light as possible, right? right so, thanks. thank you for your question. Right? Again? You can generate with a macro, though. You can shape it, add a score, infer the, the, uh, uh, um, the, the uh, hlist using, using macros. Um, the, so question, the question is about like, using macros to do, to generate the input. Yeah, I don't know. I, I personally actually, I've never actually written a macro. Um, I, I think of it as a good thing. Um, I really, I really don't want to do that. And um, for me, it's, I mean, this is the same as declaring the type for, when I declare a map, I actually do usually declare the key and the value types for, the, for it. So I want to do that. It's just that with a regular map, I cannot do that. A regular map forces me to, to choose one particular key and one particular value at the construction time of the map, right? So I cannot do what I want with, with a regular map. of the map I can I can create the M from from looking at your construction right I know that it's string to int and int to string yeah I don't know I mean uh, maybe you could have um, uh, we'll, we'll take this offline we a bit of right of, so, of time. Um, so okay thank you thank very you. much uh, you're welcome to come and talk to me